Hello everyone. Today I'm in Heron Auto, Kia and Opel in Donegal Town, County Donegal. As usual, all additional information about this dealership will be mentioned in the description box below. Hello everyone. Today I'm going to give you a full and net tour of this all new 2012 Opel Insignia SRI 4x4. In this review I'm going to be looking at the interior of the car. I'll explain how all the features work. Also start up, look at the engine, go to performance data and take a look around the exterior. So today we start a review at the exterior of the car. Gradually working our way inside. The exterior colour on this car is known as Olympic White. The SRI is one of the more basic models and as standard it comes with these 18 inch twin 5 spoke alloy wheels on continental tyres. Indicator lamps on the front fenders. Also has this very nice decorative chrome strip that goes around the perimeter of the windows. This particular insignia is the hatchback version. There are also saloon and estate cars available. Front fog lights as well as your front parking sensors. It does have rear parking sensors as well. Very nice chrome grille. Previous versions of the Opel Insignia were only available as front wheel drive cars. This new four wheel drive version though is their latest edition. A bit of legroom and headroom in the passenger side. This is a very spacious vehicle. Also has a good size glove box. Put your DVD here for setting up the satellite navigation. antenna on the roof. Chrome badging with the new 4x4 chrome badge logo. Your rear parking sensors. Has a single passed exhaust. As well as an integrated third brake light and a small rear deck lid spoiler. Excellent size boot. Plenty of room in here. You store pretty much any items you can think of. Also in the center, as you can see, it has a rear pass-through, which I'll demonstrate in the back seat. As well as storage on both sides.
This here being one of the basic models, it does have manual wind down windows in the rear. With folding rear seats. Subsequently allowing for a lot more boot space. Rear seats are very nice. Very spacious. Storage pockets in the back of each front seat. Also have a power outlet. Your rear armrest. As well as storage. And two cup holders. And the rear pastry which I was talking about. That's a class door panel. As well as your power windows for the front. Brushed aluminium handle, as well as a chrome door handle, and black accents, which can be found throughout the interior of the car, and your power mirror controls. It's the black cloth ribbon interior with white stitching, sports bucket seats in this particular model. You also have power and manual adjustments for the seats. Sport aluminium pedals, storage area on the driver's side, as well as a tilt telescoping steering wheel. So up the windows, turn off the fog lights, we'll keep the headlights on, and turn off the hazards. Fuel is very low in this car at the moment. The power on the insignia, you just depress the clutch and turn the key. It comes with a full CD radio, otherwise known in this car as Navi 600. So I'll just power it on. At the moment it's telling me my uh, fuel is very low. It tells me we're on RT2 FM and the name of the song playing and the artist. So by turning this wheel down here in the center, you can navigate through all your radio stations. All your different radio stations. You can also adjust the volume using this knob. You can also adjust it via the steering wheel. And you can change through the frequencies using this now, uh, sorry, little dial here. You also have voice commands and you can use this, uh, these buttons to mute the radio for example. And to connect your Bluetooth. It also has cruise control settings. Most of the controls up here can be uh, used using this uh, little system down here. You got your navigation. I'd like to demonstrate at the moment, but this car doesn't have it set up at, at the moment. Even if I click on it, it'll tell you navigation SD card not inserted. Just press radio here to get back. You also got your audio settings. This uh, button here, which was on the steering wheel for meeting and uh, adjusting your Bluetooth. Destination and back. Very easy system to use. I press configure here. You can change all different settings here for sport mode, for instance. You've got your sport suspension, uh, sport power performance, sport steering wheel, sport all wheel drive, and sport backlight main color instrument. So we'll go back. And you've got your different standard settings such as language, time and date, radio settings, phone settings, navigation, vehicle settings, display settings. So it's a pretty easy system. 
your CD player, your eject button. Favorite stations. All you got to do is tell us what is the biggest news story in your world today, please, 51552. Uh, to us now. We have a CD and auxiliary import. You can also select your phone. You can also select sport mode, which basically uh, quickens up the steering and makes the car perform a lot better. Tour mode, which is mainly for like long distance cruising. You also got your charge control and parking assist. Also has climate control. It also comes up on the screen. All your different settings for passenger side. Heated seats. Front and rear defrost. Also has economy mode. Another thing I like to explain, although I can't see, and I don't really know how to demonstrate it at the moment, but with economy mode engaged, as you can see on this left dial, in the small print, it has auto start stop. Now, what you're meant to be able to do with this, I can't seem to get working at the moment. I don't know, maybe it's because the fuel is so low or something. But I was reading through the manual, and what you do is you depress the clutch, and the car powers on, and if you release the clutch, uh, when the car comes to stop, it powers off. I'm pretty sure that's how it works anyway. That's what I read in the manual. Well, it's meant to be a very easy enough system to use. It's a very good sound system. Green light means it's engaged. Now it's off. Also, it's a very nice black accent. Going around the dash, which blends into the center console. Cigarette lighter and ashtray. This insignia has a six speed manual transmission. Automatic gearboxes are available. To engage reverse, just pull up here on this uh, chrome lever over to the left and up. And actually, sorry, just like demonstrate when you do that in reverse, the parking uh, assist comes up here. Brushed aluminium decorative around the gear lever itself. As well as your parking brake. Push down to deactivate it. Not to activate it. Two cup holders. Leather armrest. And you open it up. You have a storage area as well as the USB slot, auxiliary import slot, and the SD card slot. Very nice. This is looking like a very good car all around. Interior lighting. Also there's a motion sensor here. Motion sensor on. Previously I reviewed a 2010 Vauxhall Insignia Elite, top of the range model, I thought that was an excellent car. This Opel Insignia, uh, sorry, uh, base version, it's also very good. So let's see how the Insignia sounds. Majority of diesel cars these days are doing rest for about 2500 RPM. This particular insignia has the OPC Sports perforated leather wrapped steering wheel, which is very smooth and responsive, and even smoother again in sport mode with brushed aluminium. Well, your black contrast stitching.
for the insignia, it's located just down here. The engine in this insignia is a 2 litre CDTI turbo diesel. Produces 157 brake horsepower. Runs on to a top speed of 132 miles per hour. The four cylinder 16 valve engine. Produces 258 torques. Can average about 44 miles to the gallon and has an estimated 0 to 60 time of 10.3 seconds. It's a common rail fuel delivery system. It is, as I mentioned earlier, it is all wheel drive. Single hydraulic support bar. Local safety track engine. So we'll just finish up the review. We'll just turn off the headlights, power it off. What I will say is the Opel Insignia has definitely uh, come a long way since the old Vauxhall Vector, or Opel Vector as it's known as well. This new car is brilliant, so it is, it's spacious. Even this SRI basic model, uh, it's very nice, it's very nice seats. It's, it's a comfortable and spacious car, which is what the Insignia is all about. There are many versions of petrol and diesel Opel have even given this car a V6 engine in some models. It's known as the Insignia OPC. So an excellent vehicle all around. And even better again, it comes with a 5 star safety rating. Has a very nice exterior. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the review, there's different versions of it available, such as saloon and estate models. It looks absolutely fantastic, this car. It's very practical and a very good all-around vehicle. It is marketed in America as a Buick Regal. So we'll finish up now. Everyone, I hope you enjoyed this full and net tour of the 2012 Opel Insignia. Please remember to rate, comment and subscribe. And please stay tuned. There will be plenty more videos to come. Thanks everyone.